and Michael's helped make that a reality. And it's what's made this project so special, in my opinion. Michael, you made me really <laughs> work pretty hard delivering the vocals on this song. I remember coming home from that recording session going, oh, mm. <laughs> that was a lot of work. Do you remember that, the keeper mm-hmm. vocals? You pushed me to a new level, I think. Yeah, because you're just trying to get the right feel, but then and then some things just need to be, I don't know if somebody's too... Um, thinking about the message too much they may forget about the 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 natural feel of how that information needs to come across and then and it just takes somebody to remind you so it almost sounds conversational when it just flows out of you and stuff and that's such a a, a delicate song Mm -hmm. and and uh, yeah all came together from the story behind the lyrics of the song we are enough to conversation about creating a click track to set the groove before the recording of the scratch vocals, to conversation about when to leave open space in a song and not cover it up with extra instrument tracks or more vocals. Those are some of the things that we talk about in this episode of the podcast, Making of the Album Another Universe. I am Vicki Maris, singer-songwriter who released the album Another Universe. It is my joy to be here in the studio with my producer of the album and recording engineer, Michael Kelsey, and my husband and co-producer, Scott Greason. If you've been listening to the podcast, you have already heard some of our conversations about the songs on the album And if it's your first episode, I encourage you to check out the other episodes in the show and take a listen. We cover different subjects in each of the episodes about each song on the album, Another Universe. This episode of the show is sponsored by the Etsy shop, Heart Song Llamas. That is where you can order your t-shirt, the We Are Enough t-shirt, which features one of the lines out of the song. And also, you can get a copy of the physical CD, Another Universe, there in the shop. You might also see the yarn and llama roving. If you're interested in hand spinning your own yarn, there are several things like that from Dawn of Promise Farm in the Heartsong Llamas shop. But the shop also carries these items related to the album. So once again, you can find your t-shirt. If you want to order your t-shirt or give one away as a gift, you can get your physical copy of the CD if you would like to order one of those. And you'll see other things out there in the shop that are available. Exclusive for you, my podcast listener, is this discount code. When you are in the shop, Heart Song Llamas, and finishing up your order, apply this promo code, PODCAST15 for 15% off your entire order. I'll share the name of the shop just one more time with the URL, heartsonglamas.etsy.com. I have my hands over my heart right here in this moment in a gesture of thanks to you for being here listening to this episode about the song, We Are Enough. Michael and Scott and I want to remind you that you are enough. And we hope and pray that that message is conveyed as you listen to the song. But in this moment, I'm going to open the door on our conversation about the song, We Are Enough. Let's go. The story behind how that song came together is a story that comes from silence. I have been adding 30 or so minutes of silence to my daily routine, usually in the morning. And on the particular morning that the song came pouring out of me, I had just finished a period of silence. I was setting my coffee cup down in the kitchen sink and just looking at the just a few drops of coffee in the bottom of the mug. And I started hearing these song lyrics. And I I'm thinking, okay, that's kind of an interesting line for a song. And then another line came, and I thought, oh, 
I better get out my phone. And I clicked on the voice memo recorder and started recording it. I just sang the, a verse and a chorus into the phone. And then a little bit later that day, and it happened to be my birthday when I was writing that song, Scott Greason, here on the mic, yes. <laughs> is my husband. He and I have birthdays really close together. They're four days apart. And we were born in the same year, the same hospital. We didn't meet till later, but... We did meet. We just don't recall. <laughs> we don't recall meeting. it. One of the decisions we've made as a married couple is to not exchange birthday gifts or any kind of gifts at holidays. And he walks in the door just shortly after I had finished working on the first round of lyrics for that song. He walks in the door with a gift bag. And I thought, oh, no, Scott, did you get me a birthday gift? I didn't get you any birthday gift. And what are you doing? You're breaking our rule. Well, he's like, it's no big deal. Just open it. See see what I got you. Well, he had been downtown in a little shop and talking to one of the shopkeepers and bought this little, not little, it's actually kind of big coffee mug. What's on the outside of the mug, Scott? So I'm, I'm walking through the shop and I'm looking at all these really unique artisan type gifts. And I see this amazing coffee cup and it has an old style vinyl LP album on the side of it. It's a beautiful red coffee cup and obviously handmade. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to, I got to <laughs> give that to Vicky. And I really just went in the shop because I'd heard that they had very unique handmade cards, birthday cards. So I wanted to get her a, a special birthday card. So in doing so, I saw this cup and I knew I needed to have it. So, I mean, just I had the overwhelming urge that that's what I needed to give her in that moment. And so I responded. And the thing was actually a lot more expensive than what I wanted to spend yeah, for a coffee cup. You broke that rule. I too. did. And, 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 but I found this beautiful card in the coffee cup. And the, the young lady was so kind and she put it in this beautiful bag and, and wrapped it for me. You know, I took it home. What we think is fascinating about all of this is that those two things came together. I'm writing a song that has a line in it about a coffee mug. Give me one mug of morning and a slow glass of night. And while I'm writing those song lyrics and I'm staring in my coffee mug that I had used for drinking coffee that morning, you're purchasing a coffee mug for me exactly. for my birthday. And, and, and literally, <laughs> I'm 12 minutes from home. I hop in the car. I drive home. I'm all excited because I found this beautiful coffee cup and this card. I forgot about that because you had other things things about yes. your work day, like yes. other meetings and things, exactly. but you ran home to bring that, didn't you? I've I did. forgotten that I piece. Did. That's a little bit behind the lyrics that are in the song, We Are Enough. I've been asked a couple times about the genre that it fits into because it's a little different from some of the other songs on the album. And, and each one of the songs kind of has its own feel to it. Thank you, Michael Kelsey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing I want to share about that is I have not been writing to stay in a specific genre or a specific feel or a specific groove. I've just been allowing this lyrics or the melody, sometimes the melody comes first, but I've just been allowing that to come out and capturing it and just going from there. The beauty of being a singer songwriter that doesn't necessarily police their genre which, I mean, you've done this on this album, and Michael's helped make that a reality, and it's what's made this project so special, in my opinion. Michael, you made me really <laughs> work pretty hard delivering the vocals on this song. I remember coming home from that recording session going, oh, mm. <laughs> that was a lot of work. Do you remember that, the keeper mm -hmm. vocals? You pushed me to a new level, I think. Yeah, because you're just trying to get the right feel, but then and then some things just need to be, I don't know if somebody's too um, pr thinking about the message too much, they may forget about the, the, the natural feel of how that information needs to come across. And then, and it just takes somebody to remind you. So it almost sounds conversational when it just flows out of you and stuff. And that's such a, a, a delicate song. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, yeah, all came right. together. For me, it, rem it reminds me, it's very much a vocal jazz piece for me. And I don't mean jazz in the kind of a complex jazz. I'm, I'm talking more of a popular radio type jazz mm -hmm. feel to it. And it's cool because it's so unique to anything else you've ever written. And it's unique to anything else on the album. 
but also the song itself stands alone. I hear it. I want to hear it again. The melody lines combined with the lyrics, the marriage between the two is just Mm -hmm. phenomenal and And soothing. Sometimes just the silence, you know, it's like just not hearing anything and just letting the the music be in silence and is equally as important as saying something mm-hmm. is to get away from saying that and it adds to the feel, mm-hmm. kind of talks in another language. I love what you did with it, Michael. It felt so much different to me in a beautiful way once you layered in the instruments. Some of that I feel like comes when you help me when we're recording the scratch vocals and you usually try two or three or four different styles of click tracks that you often create. Would you tell our listeners a little bit about that yeah. process? Well, then you think of, you're just thinking about the groove. Yeah. So then since everything's the foundation of that, then you want to at least get in the ballpark of where it's at because at all times you're just thinking, I just want to get in the ballpark of the feel because everything that gets layered on top of that, whether somebody's singing to it or somebody's playing an instrument, it has to feel right and that's going to inspire them to do their part. So you usually just listen to a song like that and then, you know, deciding the tempo, the flow of the words, how fast are the words coming at you. And then sometimes depending on the information, sometimes it's too slow. You're going to lose the whole meaning because it's not coming to you fast enough. Sometimes it comes too fast and it, and it sounds disrupting the way you're getting that information. And then the song means nothing too. So as you're just trying to find that, that right flow and the right groove, and you just try to honor that. And when it all comes together, you feel like that's what it, exactly what it needs mm. to be. I was so happy with the way it turned out after you had added the instruments. And that definitely has helped me what you were talking about with kind of establishing that groove. Michael has created click tracks. You've beatboxed click tracks before. Mm. It's like the quick, quickest way to get a groove. It's like a, you, <laughs> in the old days, probably use a drum machine or something to find it. But why? When you can just kind of like use your mouth and get it going, get, let's get yeah. it going, and then not uh, break the momentum. Um, sometimes you just hear things at a certain flow. So then you just try to mimic the, what's in your mind of like what that feel. And you can go mm-hmm. back. If you need to change it, you can go back later and, and you just start building around it. But I've had a, a with a couple of the songs on the album, as I started playing guitar to whatever we had established for the click track, I remember some moments where, well, I think I did stop on a couple of them and just look up like, oh man, I really like this. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't thought of it, you know, back when I was songwriting it, whatever the song was. But I think this We Are Enough is one of them where I was like, oh, I love this groove. One thing I, about this song is, like so many of the other songs on the album, you know, some of the songs are whimsical, but this one has a very soothing feeling to it. But the message is very important. And I, I don't want anybody to lose sight of what that message mm-hmm. is, is that just being yourself is all that is needed, whether it be in a relationship, a romantic relationship or that of a friendship, just be who you are. Yeah, and what I was conveying in those lyrics or hoping to convey is that what you are in any given moment is enough. I've been learning that as I have been reading books that fall into that category. I enjoy listening, watching YouTube videos by Kyle Cease, and he talks often about that concept about being okay with the moment and who you are in this moment and the things that are happening in this moment have a design and even the difficult things that they're doing something to get us ready for a moment that's coming up. I wanted to convey that with those lyrics. It's helped me, I'm just going to be honest, um, as your spouse and also your fellow musician to realize that you know sometimes we get focused on the fact that that next thing that's coming up, boy, is going to be bigger It's going to be better, but the reality of it is, is the now, this very second, is exactly what we need to be, and we need to realize what that moment is. Mm -hmm. It is enough. Yeah. One other piece about that song that added an interesting dimension to it, Scott has a, a friend who's a producer in Nashville at Compass Records, and he worked with us to bring Mike Rojas into the studio and Mike played piano on that piece and uh, Scott and I were in Nashville the day that he recorded those tracks it was fun to watch him work and to see him respond Michael to what you had laid down in the tracks and to watch his 
you could just see his head like go back when he was like, oh, that's a sweet moment. You know, yeah. you could just feel it through the glass mm. <laughs> as he was uh, playing. He played piano on that track and then piano and organ on a couple of the others. So it was fun adding that extra dimension. This thing is phenomenal. And I, I just really love the song. I love the message. I love the way it was delivered. And it's one of those songs I never get tired of hearing. Oh, thank you. Well, we appreciate you being here for this conversation about the song We Are Enough on the album Another Universe. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.